so welcome to this course on category theory yeah so this is a course about foundation of mathematics and i mean i really like this subject when uh, i learned it in cambridge university from professor peter johnston who is a living legend of this subject and uh, mostly people want to learn it because it's a language yeah it's a tool it's a language for other subjects of mathematics people from computer science physics are also interested in this because it's a toolbox it provides a toolbox it provides a language to talk about different things but he said that you should learn category theory for the sake of learning it and not otherwise yeah you shouldn't just learn it as a language for doing let's say commutative algebra algebraic geometry algebraic topology and i hope that you are all here because you also share that view point that you want to learn the subject for the sake of learning the subject because then only you can see the beauty don't always keep one particular example in mind yeah that will affect your uh, intuition okay so uh, let's begin by discussing what is our society yeah this is not a sociology lecture but the name category yeah the category is a group of some uh, collection yeah so uh, can you tell me how society works some keywords about how society works interaction. interaction yes people's interaction with each other very good so that's our key point yeah people have to interact with each other so society consists of different types of individuals uh, but let us focus on human society how humans interact with other humans now there are some specific features which are unlike the mathematical structures that we have seen yeah people have a sense of identity humans have a sense of identity then uh suppose i have some opinion about you then you have some opinion about them and let us assume that it's an there are no secrets yeah everything is so then you share your opinions about this person with me and then i have formed some opinions about this person via your route but maybe this person is also known to this person and then i have formed some opinions via this route so these are different types of opinions and our opinions about ourselves that's what our identity is the one important aspect of this description is that what is inside us what is our physiology yeah medically that's irrelevant yeah if it comes up in our interaction suppose somebody is sick and then you want uh, people to behave nicely with you yeah that comes up in, as a consequence but it is not what society uh, works with our physiology is not the basic fundamental property that we deal with we always deal with opinions we have a view point towards people and those people have view points towards others and then we share information with each other and we develop opi uh, opinions about other people so this is an external perspective of the society we work with yeah there is nothing happen inside an individual we do not try to understand what the individual is made up of yeah whether it's molecules organic material inorganic material that's not our concern at this point so this external view point lies at the heart of category theory okay there are objects and there are morphisms and morphisms are interactions between different types of objects and that's all okay there is nothing inside an object that's the most important thing and this is somewhat contrary to our usual mathematical understanding okay so uh, for example can somebody give me an example of a theorem yeah let's start there any theorem your favorite it could be your favorite or rank nullity theorem. theorem what does it state uh, the dimension of an image of a homo of a linear transformation plus the 
Yeah. So what what area are you working with? You are talking about huh? vector spaces. Vector spaces, very good. So vector spaces. What are vector spaces? They are abelian groups together with scalar multiplication coming from a field. Okay, what is an abelian group? It is a group which satisfies commutativity. What is a group? It is a set with a binary operation and some other operations, let us say inverse and then a specific element, but it is a set to begin with. Right? So, the normal mathematics that you have studied so far, it all relies on sets being the underlying notion. Right? But now what we want is we do not want to talk, I mean even though we can talk about sets in terms of categories, we do not want to talk about elements of sets. You understand the difference? Yeah? Elements is something internal. We do not want to take that viewpoint. Now, in terms of, uh, so what are the maps between sets? What do we call them? Functions. functions, okay. In terms of functions, can you describe elements? Functions from the singleton set. Functions from the singleton set. Yeah, if I have one function from a singleton to give your given set x, then the image of that function is precisely one element and uh, like to summarize this, the collection of elements of that set is in bijection with the collection of functions from singleton to that set. Now this is the difference between internal versus external. An element is inside, yeah, but we can access it via an external piece of information. Yeah, so this internal external difference is the key difference between set theory and category theory. Uh, like the presence of singleton would just imply that the set is non-empty, right? Presence of singleton is set is non-empty. Very good. We'll come back to that. So hold hold on to that question that what is the role played by a singleton? Yeah, it's just not it's not just that it is non-empty, but it also has some other property. We will come back to that. So hold on to that thought. Yeah, maybe a week. Yeah, we, we are not coming back to it this week. Okay, so uh, this is the most important thing that we rely on behavior with other objects of similar kind. Okay, now we were talking about abelian groups earlier, vector spaces and abelian groups and groups. Yeah, we can narrow it down. Now, uh, when we talk about a group, yeah, let, let me write down some kind of mathematical structures. So, some examples, you give me some examples, I have already written like let us say vector spaces, but maybe I should specify that are vector spaces for today. Yeah. It can be any field, but R vector spaces, then fields, rings, okay, rings, modules, okay. Modules, let me say R modules for a some, for some specific ring R, okay. Then you already said abelian groups, then groups, anything else that you can think of mathematical structures, topological spaces, okay, good. Anything else? Categories, well, uh, well, that's not known yet as of now. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, manifolds, okay, good. Anything else? Sets, okay, good. Sets themselves. Other examples? We need lots of examples. Fields, okay, that's part of rings, but I will still write it. Graphs, good. And what else? Orders. orders. What kind of orders? Linear orders, okay. Linear orders, let us say, okay. Partial orders. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am writing lots of things and maybe 
if you like analysis metric spaces yeah so we can also include metric spaces but then when we are talking about these things then we have to separate certain things so i am going to underline two things which are essentially similar abelian groups and groups then rings and fields okay so what is the difference between abelian groups and groups commutativity and what do we call commutativity is it part of structure or properties it's a property right so abelian groups and groups they only differ by a property now what is an a group itself a group is a set together with yeah let me write it down a group is a set g a non empty set yeah necessarily then what what operations do we have on it binary operation let me call it multiplication from g cross g to g okay good then okay now you said associativity is associativity written in this description of a group identity, identity okay so some element e some specific element e in g yeah uh, let me write that and inverse yeah let me call it i from g to g now this is what we call the structure of groups okay so this is the structure and what are the properties the properties are m is associative yeah these are properties m is associative then e is identity for m both both ways yeah i mean left and right then third one i is i is inverse of m yeah in the sense that i mean you can write down axioms of groups but these are properties and where do we distinguish between these two things when we talk about the appropriate notion of a morphism between two groups what is what is that called a morphism between groups a group homomorphism okay so it's a group homomorphism and it must preserve the structure but it doesn't care about properties group homomorphism must take m to m multiplication should be preserved inverse should be preserved identity should be preserved but we never say that associativity should be preserved because does, does it even make sense to say that associativity is preserved by homomorphism it those are individual properties if g1 is a group g2 is a group then associativity is a property of that multiplication operation and the homomorphism has nothing to do with that so the first thing that when you start learning about any new mathematical discipline is that you should know what is the difference between structure and properties okay so for example tell me about vector spaces what is part of structure field the scalar multiplication operation is part of the structure yeah field is a uh, let's say external piece of data but the that mr multiplied by ms applied on x yeah then that is mrs applied on x yeah scalar multiplication rs dot x is equal to r of s of x now that is a property not part of structure so we don't expect it to be preserved so this is important distinction between structure and properties and you should always remember that yeah this is going to be very crucial in this course topological spaces what can you say about manifolds and topological spaces do they differ in structure or properties just properties 
tell me what are more properties satisfied by a topological space if you are looking at a proper manifold should have more structure it should have those charts atlas yeah lot of data should be present so that is part of structure and not just properties similarly metric spaces all metric spaces are topological spaces the converse is not true yeah but what is the difference between metric spaces and topological spaces is it structural or property wise structural yeah the metric data is different now some of these things are uh, like similarly a yeah, linear orders partial orders a linear order is a partial order with satisfying extra property not structure yeah so always keep your eyes open and look at these things because this is really going to be crucial while understanding different examples of categories now the categories that we talk about their objects are going to be some familiar mathematical structures most of the times but you should also remember that categories are a vast generalization of this notion of structure and structure preserving maps okay i will show you some examples where you won't even imagine that oh these are the objects the objects don't really play any role the morphisms determine everything yeah so uh, this is another thing yeah i mean category theory will give you i mean the uh, internal external perspective uh, the comparison was the first thing set theory versus category theory is internal versus external second thing is that it's a vast generalization of objects of a certain kind structures mathematical structures of a certain kind and um, maps which preserve that mathematical structure now the third thing that we can discuss is this is also a graphical approach of doing lot of things okay so what do i mean by that so maybe you have done a course on algebra have you all done a course on algebra yes so we have seen first isomorphism theorem then first isomorphism theorem second one third one in any course on algebra that has to do with certain diagram commuting can anybody tell me what is the first isomorphism theorem let's say in the case of abelian groups ha uh ha -huh. so uh, so the surjective group homomorphism or ha ha and uh, the panel is defined by the uh, collection of the elements which uh, any surge, any group homomorphism from g1 to g2 kernel is defined by elements which are mapped to identity elements which are mapped to identity fine kernel is a normal subgroup yes we can quotient out and the one quotient kernel phi is a isomorphic to image of g1 image of g1 yes i mean uh, okay maybe we can write it so this is uh, let's say this is g1 to g2 yeah then there is let me call this phi then there is kernel of G one, yeah. I mean, I am going to write something which you will probably understand later in the course. Like at the end, we are talking about some abelian categories here, or additive categories, or something weaker. Let's say these are abelian groups. So this is G one mod kernel of G one. That's equal to the image, right? So, okay. so uh, i can write zero zero is the trivial group let's say we are talking about abelian groups and then we have a map here which is inclusion i mean or injective map 
So basically, we are saying that this diagram commutes. Yeah, you have seen such diagrams in different types of uh, different courses. So this is graphical approach. It's a graphical approach in, in the sense that we are, we are given certain sets and we are given certain functions. At a time, we only talk about finitely many of them. So we can write them as a graph. Yeah, some objects, directed graphs to be more specific. These are some objects and there are some arrows. So therefore, vertices and direct and directed arrows. Yeah, so it's graphical. So this is also a way of, I mean, we are looking at different areas of mathematics in this more visual manner. And another thing is that suppose you want a certain object to exist, certain mathematical structure to exist satisfying certain properties. Now it may or may not exist. But if it exists, then are we getting the best possible solution of that problem? Okay, so in more technical terms, we call it the universal solution or the universal property. Does your object satisfy certain universal property? That's another question that we'll try to answer in like what is the meaning of universal property? That's a question we'll try to answer in this course. Sometimes, I mean, uh, you have also seen uh, perhaps applied mathematics to some extent where you, uh, or I mean, just take polynomials. Given any continuous function, you can approximate it with a sequence of polynomial functions. Yeah, you have seen this theorem. Over real numbers also, Weierstrass approximation theorem, yeah. So uh, now what is this that we want some approximation. Now in category theory also we can find best approximations, yeah. Like you are looking for a solution to some problem, you can't find an exact solution but at least an approximate solution and can you find the best one that satisfies certain property. So that's also universal properties and best approximations. I'm just throwing some keywords here which will make sense as we go forward with the course. Yeah, but this is still an abstract framework. Yeah, best approximation also has to make sense properly. Some, uh, when this definition came into existence, I mean, this uh, the definition of a category is due to Eilenberg and MacLean, two algebraic topologists. And their first ever definition came in 1945. Okay. MacLean is also the author of the best known book yeah, of on this course. It's called Categories for Working Mathematician, CWM. Uh, it's a very slick book and it's definitely good for the course yeah, because we are more or less following the same pattern but I will just try to add some more intuition to the concepts. Right, so Eilenberg and MacLean came up with this definition just like it is the definition of a group, yeah, just some generalization of that. But while they were doing that and some other people were working on other subjects, some people thought that it's, it has to do with geometry. Some people thought it's generalized algebra like universal algebra. Some people, uh, especially logicians, they thought that, oh, your objects are nothing but formulas of certain kind and your morphisms are deductions. Okay, so there are different viewpoints of looking at the same thing. Everybody wants to look at it the way they want, yeah? but uh, this is still like all encompassing a universal language for mathematics. It's a very abstract framework and let me get it out of my system that usually people prefer to call it abstract nonsense, I don't. Okay? It's not nonsensical, it has got lot of power, it's a language, it's a toolbox. 
okay with this you can simplify your life 100 times yeah so definitely that's why i mean whatever i said in the beginning learn it for the sake of learning it don't learn it just as a language there are so many tools you will once you start thinking about mathematical structures in the light of this new machinery then your viewpoint towards mathematics will change yeah you will easily identify oh this is a category then this is a function this is a natural transformation that will become your second nature yeah your language will definitely change okay i am going to pose some uh, specific problems now and uh, let's see i mean if you want to answer them you are most welcome and these are more philosophical problems okay what is common between gcd of two natural numbers then cartesian product of groups and union of two subsets of of a fixed set x what's common between these things yeah so these are similar types of constructions like a priori like if you have never seen these things before then they don't really make sense yeah i mean one is cartesian product one is simply gcd <laughs> yeah another one is union like these are very different types of operations but it takes two inputs and it gives out one output that's one common thing between them but they also have they all 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 of them have a universal property what is the universal property of gcd it is the greatest common divisor so whenever two natural numbers a and b have one common some common divisor then that common divisor must divide the gcd right so that's the common property then cartesian product we'll see that then union of two uh, two subsets that's also the smallest set which contains given subsets yeah so it also has universal property like it is the unique solution to some problem unique smallest solution or unique largest solution depending on the need okay so this is one thing what about cartesian product of groups cartesian product of groups yeah cartesian product of groups has to do with existence of maps so if you have uh, i mean let's say g1 cross g2 then g1 cross g2 to g1 and g2 there are there is a pair of maps first projection second projection now if you have any other group h well let me write it why not g1 cross g2 then you have g1 you have g2 then this is pi1 and this is pi2 right so if you have any other group h together with two maps let's say phi1 and phi2 two groups g1 and g2 then there exists a unique map from h to g1 cross g2 such that both these triangles commute okay so basically this phi1 will factor through pi1 and phi2 will factor through pi2 like it's happening simultaneously that is called a universal property yeah moreover we are saying that there exists a unique factorization which makes both of these things work simultaneously if you want to think about gcd 
then you simply replace the same things with let's say a and b are numbers then gcd i am going to write it like this and let me uh, take any other number c now i am going to draw arrows the arrows represent that divides now you have something here you have something here so c divides a c divides b then well obviously there exists a unique arrow here namely c divides gcd of a and b so it's a universal property and can you see that these are the same you can write something down for union similarly it just says that the arrows represent contains superset yeah then the same kind of diagram would work so this is our first problem then second problem is any questions uh, what will be the pi and pi two for union for union inclusion maps the opposite of inclusion maps well we'll see that Let, let's not go into too much detail like we are ta talking about the opposite category i should have said intersection to be consistent with your intuition but i said union but we can talk about it uh, in in terms of the opposite category we'll come to the, those things oops okay so second problem that we can see uh what is common between free group construction i'm not sure everybody here is familiar with the free group construction then tensor product and abelianization of a group yeah i mean i'm not talking about necessarily tensor products of groups yeah i'm just abelian groups i'm just saying tensor products of modules in general vector spaces so these are also well i just want to uh, point out adjunctions yeah there are some functors which does right things yeah some adjunctions i am not going to specify left or right especially because i am really bad with left and right <laughs> i'll make sure that when i say say things i will say them correctly but they are all adjunctions yeah you are given one per yes yeah about the unity property mm -hmm. so objects which uh, satisfy this unity property like can we comment on its uniqueness up to isomorphism yes sometimes yeah we have to talk about like we have to guarantee the existence of such an object such a universal object and if it exists then the property itself will ensure it's unique we'll see all those things yes yeah i mean these are different types of constructions so basically uh, when we were on the first slide earlier then you said that all groups are sets all abelian groups are groups all groups are sets so basically we can forget that g is a group out of this whole data g m e i we can forget about m e i we can only remember the the set and if you want to reverse this process then what is the best way to do that the best way is the free group construction okay so it's a solution to certain problem then abelianization yeah every abelian group is a group but given any group can you find the best possible abelian approximation for that group the question has to be made precise yeah but can we find the best possible approximation and the answer is yes it's called abelianization we have to simply quotient out by the commutator relation 
yeah so that's our main goal here that there are different types of problems in different scenarios but they all have same underpinning principle right so that's the purpose of category theory and the power the unifying power of of this subject you are not necessarily talking about just one thing at a time but multiple things now i think we are ready to start with the actual definition of what a category is uh, then we'll discuss lot uh, more nuances of of it okay a category c now it's a mathematical structure so a structure should have some signature i mean there should be some operations some specific elements some relations so we are going to first describe that a category c is given by the data of two collections yeah first one is called op c and mor c yeah op c stands for objects mor c stands for morphisms now while we are writing this definition keep this particular example in mind objects are sets and morphisms are functions then what are the properties yeah two collections op c and mor c together with operations so i am going to call that domain comma codomain these are two operations from mor c to op c so basically every morphism will have a domain and it will have a codomain and they will be objects okay then another operation is called identity and that goes in the opposite direction op c to mor c so basically every object will have its own local identity it's a morphism yeah and finally this composition this is a partial map mor c cross mor c and you can see this is a not a full arrow yeah because i want to indicate it's a partially defined morphism yeah defined only for f comma g satisfying domain f is equal to codomain g unless this condition is satisfied you can't define composition i mean you understand there is a function from real numbers to real numbers you can't compose it with a function from naturals to naturals yeah you need to have one common connection point so that's what we are doing yeah so it's defined only when only for these things now this is the structure structure part of a category now we have to discuss the properties okay now such that the following properties are true the uh, following properties hold okay so the first property is obviously any ideas let's try to write the definition together directly jumping to associativity let's do something with domain codomain and identity okay yes we can do that or we can just not talk about composition in the first property uh, let's call that for any 
C in objects of C, yeah. The what is the domain of the identity on C? And this is also the codomain of identity of C. This is how I will write yeah, identity sub C. So identity is a map from C to C. Yeah, because it's identity of C. Okay. What else? You are talking about composition, so let's introduce them. So F composed with identity sub domain F is equal to what can you say? Identity codomain F, okay, composed with F is equal to F for each F in more C, okay. So identities are actually local identities, they behave nicely when uh, wherever we want them. So they are left and right identities appropriately for these morphisms. Third thing, he said associativity, yeah. So whenever, yeah, let me write it like this. Are morphisms, when I say these are morphisms, you, you understand? What I mean? What is the domain of F in this picture? A. Codomain of uh, G is same as domain of H. Yeah, maybe I should rewrite this D properly. Whenever these are morphisms, then the order in which you compose doesn't matter. Yeah, so. I will just write that H composed with G composed with F is equal to H composed with G composed with F. Any other properties that you can think of? Sometimes there is a condition that the uh, number of morphisms between two objects is set. Number of morphisms between two objects, I mean I am glad you brought that up, yeah the set theoretic issues. So we have to discuss them, but that is not part of the definition over here, okay. If there is a morphism from A to B, then there exists a morphism from B to A, so that the composition is identity, that means it guarantees one sided inverse, yeah, but we do not put that thing over here. I mean think about a function, does a function always satisfy that property? Oh yeah, perhaps, I mean if it is injective then it will, if it is not injective it will not. Yeah, so the, this is not really a property, anything else that you can think of? Okay, I am just going to give you some more thing like sometimes I will write it as 1C, sometimes I will write it as identity C, yeah I mean those things are the same, yeah just a piece of notation. Okay, so there was one important issue brought up whether the collection of all morphisms from one object to another whether they form a set or not. So basically we are now trying to compare two different things, two different philosophies for mathematics, two different foundations, set theory and category theory. There are many problems which I did not discuss, I mean you were happy with this. Let us start from the first, first line itself, C is given by the data of two collections. What is a collection? Well, for all practical purposes, it can be a class, okay. Now uh, if you have not seen what a class is, I will give you a quick reminder or a quick crash course. 
yeah you, uh, you want to talk about certain objects of uh, kind and they should all satisfy certain property so there is some language in the background and you can describe those properties using sentences in that language or formulas in that language if, and all objects which satisfy those properties they form a class now whether or not that class is a set or not it depends on whether that class is an element of another class but we don't really want to worry about that okay these are collections these could be sets these may not be sets yeah we we are not worried about it although one thing you should remember yeah that if the set of objects is not a set then the set of morphisms is also not a set can you tell me why exactly identities yeah because at least as many morphisms exist as many objects yeah for each object there is one identity map which has that domain and codomain so it can't be equal to another identity map right so therefore these collections are just classes then uh, now once we start talking about set theory then the first thing that came up like about a century ago is so called russell's paradox what happens with russell's paradox can somebody state it there is no set of all sets there is no set of all sets okay the collection of sets is not a set now uh the question is do we bypass that or do we resolve that issue in set theory we resolve that by talking about classes like some classes are divided into proper classes or sets yeah but in category theory there can exist a category which is the collection of all categories i mean we we usually try to put some set theoretic level like collection of all small categories that will be a large category then with large categories some authors prefer to use the word quasi category yeah but for all practical purposes uh, let's assume that we are working with something manageable and not get into set theoretic constraints so usually i mean if you look at any advanced book on not just on category theory but something where category theory is used then there would be an appendix which talks about oh you fixed a universe of sets and work with that yeah i mean whether you like zermelo frankel set theory or this bernays and godel set theory or grothendieck set theory it doesn't matter whatever set theory you like you fix that and you work with that and where will set theory enter in this scenario uh, i'm going to talk about now so suyesh already mentioned that there should be a collection or some collection should be sets so let me introduce this yeah so given a category c and objects a and b denote by home c ab or just c ab the collection of all morphisms f satisfying domain of f is equal to a and codomain of f is equal to b okay so all the morphisms from a fixed object to another object this is called the home set yeah now even though okay i will use the word home set it's not necessarily a set okay this is just a terminology yeah 
if you are talking about uh, sets and functions, then you will usually denote it by fun. Yeah, functions from A to B, fun A B. Yeah, but this is just home. Yeah, the, so always remember that the category under consideration has to be highlighted in this notation. Yeah, so therefore we have added this C or this C. Don't just write home A B because then it's not clear which category you are working in. Okay, so this is something important. Now, if object specify the category, no, for example, I could be talking about two abelian groups and maybe I want to consider them as objects in the category of groups rather than those, those will be the same. I gave you a wrong example, but maybe I can talk about metric spaces, two metric spaces and instead of Lipschitz continuous maps, I could be talking about just continuous maps. There could be different types of morphisms, right? Uh, sometimes you are talking about category of rings uh, where the morphisms preserve just zero, plus and dot. Sometimes you ask for them to preserve one also, yeah, unital morphisms. So depending on the need, you might have different categories and you should always specify. This is called a home set and set theory enters into this. So a category C is called locally small if home C A B is a small set. That's how we talk about sets, a small set. Yeah, there is no concept of a large set. But still, we always talk about small set. Is a small set for all A, B in objects of C. Okay. So, these are locally small categories. Most categories that you encounter in practice in algebra topology analysis, they will be locally small categories. I haven't yet given you examples, but I will. Then, a category C is called small if more C is a set, is a small set. The collection of morphisms itself is a small set. See, this forces the collection of objects to be a set. But the converse is not true. So you understand this? Any questions so far? Huh? Small set is a set. Yeah, according to any definition of set theory you like. It's just a set. Yeah. But we always call it small and large category and small category. So uh, one important concept that we have already talked about here is local notion of locality. Local always means happens in home sets. Now, uh, let me go back to the definition a bit and then again emphasize on the fact that there is a collection of objects but the objects do not have any internal structure. Yeah, we can only think about objects and morphisms between objects. There is nothing happening inside. They are black boxes. Yeah? Don't ask questions about them. Unless you can visualize the internal structure via their external behavior, you shouldn't look inside. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and look at examples. So this is another feature of this course that somebody who is completely abstract minded yeah, likes definitions like okay I can work with this definition I can deduce using only definitions theorems and I don't need examples to understand things then this course is for them 
yeah because it's completely abstract yeah if you don't care about examples then you can define whatever you like and you can prove properties of those new concepts on the other hand if you are interested in different areas of mathematics or have got exposure to different areas of mathematics and unfortunately i mean i am a mathematics person so i don't know enough examples about physics or computer science so i will give you examples from mathematics and if you can understand and appreciate concepts from other areas of mathematics then also this course is for you yeah but you should be at least one of the two yeah you can't be just focused on like just one area of mathematics and then i want to do this course yeah this is not not for you then right so examples of categories let's look at the first example the thing that i asked you to think about while uh, dealing with this definition we will call it sets yeah i am writing this underline because i want to differentiate between the word sets from the category of sets what are the objects objects are sets and what are morphisms morphisms are functions then what is identity identity function yeah what is compo uh, composition it is composition of functions what is domain and codomain you understand for a function there is domain because a function is defined to be a triple always remember that yeah function is not just f f will denote the rule but f is usually a triple a comma f comma b yeah a is the domain b is the codomain f is the rule which assigns to every element of a a unique element of b yeah so that this triple is the data of a function so that's already encoded yeah we need morphisms as functions because especially if you go to a uh, uh, people who have just crossed the their 12th exams past 12th exams or a levels now you ask them give me some example of functions then they'll tell you sin yeah but what is the domain what is the codomain yeah you, you can't just say sin it has to be x mapping to sin x from real numbers to real numbers yeah so i hope all of you are mature enough to understand the difference between this and that so a function is a triple so identity domain codomain you all understand things now similar examples come coming from algebra we said that structures mathematical structures and morphisms between them structure preserving morphisms so one simple example is the category of well i can write it as gr or groups yeah so what are the morphisms here group homomorphisms okay i'm just going to write down a bunch of examples in the same way abelian groups identity is simply the identity function in each case yeah because it happens to be happens to satisfy the homomorphism property then abelian groups yeah then next concept is yeah can we deduce everything about properties of groups from their category and do you have to specify what do you mean by uh, what do you mean by everything i mean like okay um, so suppose suppose like you have a group z mod t z uh huh and you need to deduce that it is it is z mod t z by just looking at its category you are asking for very specific questions right now i mean uh, can you <laughs> can you specify one group uh -huh. by just looking at the morphisms and, and well it depends on it depends on the group yeah you uh, see basically every group is an object 
so you can always talk about one particular group you have access to that data you can talk about one particular group no like you you just know about the category and 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 and, and like and like and like you have to reduce what one of the object of the category is just by having the information of the category i don't think your question is well defined yet how do you deduce or uh, information about one object only from looking at the properties of the category there are some special objects definitely which we we will talk about but unless i mean if you mean that uh, by the data of category then you should have uh, you don't know what that group is perhaps i mean let me try to rephrase your question you can tell me whether i'm right or wrong you have one object and then you know all the morphisms which go out of it and you know all the morphisms which come into it but when you say that then you also know the identity morphism i mean you know that uh, those <laughs> yeah. morphisms are there but you don't know like what those morphisms are i mean you, you if you don't know what those morphisms are i, I don't even understand your question do you know all morphisms going out of that object do you know all morphisms coming into that object then you know identity but we know them only in the language of the category like only up to composition only up to composition yes. then what do you want to do like yeah okay you are you, perhaps you are asking me this question that can you deduce that this is an this is a group what group this is you know you are working in the category of groups yeah. in some cases yes not i don't think you can always do that some things can have similar properties i mean definitely there could be isomorphic objects which have same morphisms and you, you only need to deduce it up to isomorphism deduce it up to isomorphism maybe we'll revisit this question later yeah let's look at things in a, in a more detail you want to say something what does it mean to know the morphisms up to composition yeah i don't know that's why i said it's not a well defined question <laughs> yeah le let's postpone it maybe after some time this will be clearer then uh, well i can also say real vector spaces what are the maps here linear. don't just say linear are linear maps yeah they you can also talk about uh, r vector spaces with only abelian group homomorphisms that's a different category yeah composition of two abelian group homomorphisms will be again an a group homomorphism yeah there is no, no nothing like abelian group homomorphism it's just a group homomorphism then similarly if you are uh, given rings category of rings let's say unital rings yeah i have got i in there so this is the category of unital rings and morphisms which preserve unital uh, uh, structure like identity yeah because there is also another category where we write r n g s rings not necessarily containing identity so identity means stands for i so you remove i from that rngs then uh, some people also talk about rigs yeah where you remove negation <laughs> okay so these are semi rings rings without negation okay then monoids yes you understand monoids they are i mean the definition is same ex except that you cut down the part of inverse in the definition of group yeah structure is simpler and one property is missing then if i want to further simplify it i can also talk about category of semi groups yeah it just a set with uh, associative binary operation 
yeah so the structure only consists of binary operation and the property is associativity uh, then perhaps you are given a fixed ring r and then you want to talk about the category of r mod the category of left r modules yeah so this is the left r modules so basically if you are not talking about vector spaces vector spaces are uh, take scalars from a field and in field multiplication is commutative whereas in general rings multiplication is not necessarily commutative so therefore you have to distinguish between r mod and mod r yeah left and right multiplication uh, scalar multiplication so these are right r modules okay and in a similar way you can have this category top yeah this is the category of topological spaces and continuous maps then you can have fourth one matrix spaces and lipschitz continuous maps so there is something to verify here okay that composition of two lipschitz continuous maps is again continuous when i said topological spaces and continuous maps what is the definition of a continuous map inverse image of open set is open okay so verify that now i am going to give you another example which doesn't fall into this setup okay and i am going to call it mat r okay this is the category of matrices with real entries so objects are natural numbers positive integers okay and homomorphisms like home nm in mat r is the set of all m cross n in matrices over r with entries in r now uh, this example i have included to show you that not everything has to be a function yeah m and n are just numbers nothing more objects can be anything morphisms can be anything and well here what is domain number of when i say m cross n matrices so number of columns is the domain yeah that's not how you think about it right number of columns and number of rows yeah this is a different way of looking at things i'll do one more example and then we'll stop for today so sixth one is that suppose consists of a single object in the composition mat r the matrix multiplication yes thanks for asking that composition in mat r is composition uh, multiplication yes multiplication correct as yes, let me write that composition is multiplication yeah very interesting way it shows you the power of categories you can abstract things out so object c consists of a single object star and let us say mor c uh, is a small set then what is this category 
what the uh, what can be domain and codomain of every single morphism star right so you have a star uh, this is the only object and every morphism is sort of coming in then the data of your category will force it to have something let me there should be domain and codomain we have clarified but there should be one identity morphism so let me call this to be identity star then what is the property that identity satisfies look at this property too f composed with identity is identity composed with f is equal to f so what are we doing here yes so home star star which we write as endomorphisms of that object yeah in this category c this gets a monoid structure composition is multiplication composition in the category is multiplication and identity is the multiplicative identity so okay take a moment to understand what's happening this is a single monoid thought of as a category okay on the previous slide i wrote over here that monoids and monoid homomorphisms also form a category you can see we are leaving set theory here yes sets themselves they form a category a single set is also a category but the collection of all sets is not a set but here a single monoid is itself a category can be thought of as a category and different monoids put together like all monoids taken together together with monoid homomorphisms that can also be thought of as a category so in category theory I, i always like to say that you should know where you are yeah which category are you working with yeah that's why writing this is very important home sub c yeah i'll give you a simple homework problem think about a single set as a category see if you can do that and let's end it here